Hi guys, and welcome back to Always Strikes Last. Uh, this is my first attempt at doing a video blog post. Not done one before. I do do some recording for um, a YouTube channel, but I've never done anything quite like this. Uh, but I'm kind of tired of having to type up my blog, so I thought I'd give this a go. And also, the actual nature of what I want to show you today kind of requires me to use a video. You won't really get the message from just a written up review anyway. Uh, so, firstly, apologies for the fact that the video quality for this post isn't going to be the greatest because I'm actually recording it from an iPhone. Uh, so, I realise that's probably not the best um, method to do that. Um, in any case, um, we can see here I've got the iBooks open on my iPad. Uh, and of course, Games Workshop have been releasing plenty of digital products recently. Uh, so, First up on the list really is I got hold of uh, Citadel uh, How to Paint Ultramarines, which was, you know, reasonable. Um, cost a couple of quid, it was about the same cost as a White Dwarf. And um, yeah, I thought it was a fairly decent quality. It's, you know, probably doesn't give you much more than a White Dwarf would. Um, but I figure, you know what, we'll go into it while I'm here, so I'll have a quick run through of that so obviously you click into the app and it just loads up as a book and unfolds and you can actually see the very last thing that I was looking at which was the um, camo cloak um, but this is kind of how things break down uh, for the application it obviously like gives you an overview of sort of like ultramarines and you can just sort of go then into these articles and actually you know read all of the stuff that they've got put there for you so it takes you through uh, a tactical marine there is a slight lag in loading pages you saw the load uh, bar flick up there and that sometimes kicks up this is one thing I do really like about the uh, digital products is that they the, the images are really crisp I mean obviously I'm, I'm on the m most modern version of the iPad so I've got full retina display so that just works out fantastically for um, viewing these kind of images and it kind of that's kind of the point of these kind of applications I can realize that people say oh well you know you can get this kind of stuff in a book you can't really not to the level of detail that you get it here and the fact that you can manipulate these images so you can see there I can click into that image but further I can really zoom in at like real high level detail so if I just move this a little bit closer you can see all of the detail on that model there. Now obviously it's not painted at this point but as I start to flick through you can start to zoom in to really see where their highlighting is coming in. So in terms of painting guide I think GW has really done a, a great job on there. Apologies for the fact that I'm having to flick about here. It's not the easiest thing to do to record this on an iPhone. So obviously it takes you through step by step you can flick through all of these things it does give you the breakdown of uh, games workshop colors so if you were you know interested in using their range uh, by all means that's the best way to go about it uh, and in here it's just basically taking you all the way through painting a tactical space marine all of the uh, stuff to do that you can see that one of those loading uh, boxes are coming up so they're not this it's not the slickest of applications and so far I've only experienced uh, two of the digital products I have played around with some of the samples as well um, but these are two that I've actually purchased out of my own money folks so um, obviously now moves on to a sergeant so from here it pretty much flicks from how to paint a tactical marine which basically gives you the overview of how to paint uh, ultramarines and then onto a dreadnought which means you know it's showing you how to paint a vehicle and really it's just giving you like ideas of how to paint the different sorts of battle damage here uh, just wouldn't if you follow all of these steps you there's no reason you can't paint a, a fairly decent ultramarines army so I think it's pretty good. I mean, it's been slagged off a little bit when you check out the the forums, but I think it's a, that's a little bit unfair. I think the criticism against it has been slightly harsh. I mean, it's really, really not that bad. And I'm having to flick now to my right hand because my left hand's useless for this. I'm trying to zoom. There we go. So you can really, if you're not holding an iPhone, you can really zoom in on these and have a look at the detail and, and all of that. So. That's pretty much it for the the painting um, guide. I mean, it obviously goes through and moves on to the storm talent. Of course, um, we should get a um, 360 degree look at this at some point. I think if not, it's in the uh, Space Marine Codex, which I downloaded a sample of. Um, so yeah, it's pretty it's pretty decent. 
in terms of taking you through stuff. I don't really want to spend too much time on the, the painting guide because I didn't really start this video to take you through that. So that's pretty much that. It's a 33 page uh, book and not too bad. I mean it's like I said it cost, whoops, like I said it cost about um, the same as the White Dwarf. Sorry guys, I'm trying to navigate while holding the phone. Uh, it costs about the same as a White Dwarf, so I think it's fairly decent. So I'd give a thumbs up for that digital product there. Um, then we move on to the Orcs and Goblins book. Now this is a slightly more important part of the range and a slightly more debatable part of the range of to whether or not this is really worth it and the reason I say that is because it's about one pound fifty cheaper than a a standard hard copy a standard hardback book um, for the army book so I think off the top of my head I think it's twenty seven pound fifty or something from Games Workshop I could have that slightly wrong um, but it's it's about that much and uh, the actual book here the ebook is only uh, 26 pounds something in, in so in terms of difference about 1 pound 50 I'm wittering slightly over the cost but you kinda get my point there it's quite an expensive purchase in terms of a book e-products are normally significantly cheaper than their hardback alternatives um, but the reason that it is is partly because it's Games Workshop and I don't really want to get into the whole philosophy of Games Workshop um, but another reason it is because um, they're kind of touting this as a gaming aid rather than a book so they've tried to put some features in there that make it more convenient for playing you know Warhammer Fantasy Battles which is cool uh, so I'll take you through the general format of the book this is how the application actually uh, loads and you can sort of pinch out of this and then you get basically chapter headings so if you take a look here you can see the green skin hordes uh, some really nice artwork involved. I mean, generally speaking, in the army books you get nice artwork, but obviously with these you can actually click into the iPad when you're clicking the right buttons and you can zoom in when, again, you're not trying to hold onto an iPhone at the same time as pinch the screen. But Also, it's probably a good idea not to drop the iPhone when doing a video review like this because you're busy trying to pinch the screen uh, and of course it's also probably best to actually show people the pinching functionality when you're actually in the right area so this is where we were you do have to actually pinch into this image before you can start to zoom into it so you can see that you can zoom quite nicely into that uh, and if you use the home and lock buttons on um, on the iPad you can take some really nice screenshots of that um, you don't necessarily need to like zoom in to do it you could just take a screen print of this here and then crop it in your photo application but I'm not really trying to teach you how to use your iPad at this point so that's obviously how you you know you can pinch out of the uh, actual so once you're in the chapter you can flick through it page by page or you can just pinch out of that chapter and then you get these overall chapter headings so you can see it's running reasonably slick here it actually seems to run on the high chapter uh, heading it seems to run a lot faster than it does for the um, the how to paint guide so that's pretty cool um, but once you actually do start to click in it I found it tends to it's gonna work perfectly now but it tends to not like moving about um, once you're actually inside the chapters but it's working perfectly now so maybe I had too many applications over uh, uh, maybe I had too many applications open rather when I was playing around with it before so you can see obviously we've got the green skin hordes here and it just takes you how to use this book uh, explains how the navigation works for the iPad and all of that then starts to go through all the fluff all the laws of the green skins which is fairly cool you know I mean you could sit and read this through. Originally when I bought this I was kind of thinking well you know what I've got the hardback book and that's how I enjoy reading um, reading my um, army books when I get them I love to just pour through the entire book. Uh, I know some people just flick straight to the rules but I actually like to work start to finish. I love all the lore, I love all of the rules, I love all the artwork. Um, pretty much I'm into the whole hobby rather than just one aspect of it. So you can see some really nice full page artworks. I mean in fact that might actually get put on my wallpaper later. Um, and in fact just while we're here you can see 
that I've actually got one from the uh, Space Marine book so if I move all the icons out of the way you can see that one's from the, the Space Marine book there pretty cool image of the ultramarines fighting necrons but obviously not here to show you that uh, I do have one on the lock screen but obviously I'm not going to video me putting my pin into my iPad for fairly obvious reasons um, in any case um, you can see that's a pretty cool image and then you obviously flick through the law so I think you get the message there really um, you can also navigate through this bit here which is fairly cool I find this navigation to be more useful than this navigation along here so particularly when you're starting to look at say like the bestiary it's a lot easier to go hey what the stats on a night goblin and just flick through this list and go I wanna see night goblins and then it just takes you straight to the night glob goblin stuff so it's pretty standard affair pretty much like the army book you've got your lore of the night goblins a nice little shot of night goblins again zoom into that look at his pretty epically ugly face uh, and then of course you've got the entry here and any special rules now this is where the application starts to become pretty cool and sorry I'm just flapping around with the uh, iPhone there so I'll try and keep it st as steady as I can so you can click into any of these links and get a full description of the rules so we can see that the infantry troop type is described on page 80 of the Warhammer rulebook now obviously there is no digital copy of the Warhammer rulebook it would be fairly epic if there was um, either if you could link through here or whether or not you know they you just move to the book you know use your slide on the iPad to switch to the next open that would be pretty cool if you could do that but right now you can't you'd have to go and get your your BRB and, and flick through it yourself um, but it's still pretty cool that it references exactly where you need to go um, you need that kind of stuff but more useful perhaps because obviously you you should understand things like the infantry rule as standard um, <laughs> to be a little bit elite there but if you click on animosity for instance which is an army specific rule which you may not know um, you can then go through all of the actual rule for for that so I kind of I wish this table was more accessible in a way for the animosity table because it's that kind of thing you have to call up often but it's still pretty cool the fact that it doesn't bloat the page with the special rules um, so in the actual hardback version of the book you've of course got the special rules all written out exactly where you first find them and then quite often for instance where you have uh, for night goblins you'll have fear elves it explains that right at the beginning of the book and I'm flapping my hand around and you can't really see gestures um, it explains that right at the beginning of the book in the hardback version and then it's assumed that you remember that rule whenever you see it now obviously fear elves is reasonably easy to understand um, but there are rules like size matters that you might forget uh, or something like that and all different rules basically pop up in here so you can flick through all of your stuff I'm trying to is size matters in here I'm not too sure now now I've said that I get to look like a douchebag for getting it wrong and of course you can flick through the book or I could actually just make this easier on myself by pinching out and going to no, it doesn't look like that's in there. I would have thought that would be. Maybe it's under orcs, because si orcs have size matters, so that makes perfect sense. There, we there it is. So size matters in the um, hardback version of the book is at the very beginning of the army entry. So that tells you that you know orcs don't care about goblins running away, and it's assumed that you just recall that whenever you see it. But you can click size matters here and go read the rule right there and that will be listed for every unit that is affected by that special rule so it means you don't have to keep flicking backwards and forwards the rule is there and it's accessible and it tells you exactly what it does uh, and what's also kind of cool is you have this glossary index now you have your dictionary now this is just the standard um, dictionary for the device so if you click on that obviously no definitions can be found for size matters because it's not a word uh, so if you go to glossary index this is where things get start to get really useful so this is your glossary of all of the special rules within your book um, looks like the magic items are in there as well because there's a skull wand of Kaloth um, 
and literally size matters it's got your full description here and what I really like is the index this lists every single entry of where that rule applies so you can see that it's listed under heroes because there's going to be orc heroes it's listed for orcs listed for lords again you've got units orc units within every single category there so that's why that rule is listed and then of course you can click on chapter 9 lords and flick directly to where that rule is uh, mentioned you saw the little uh, yellow pop up there to show exactly where um, it's related and now we've actually flicked to the army book uh, entry and you can still click into rules there so it can take a look at Tusker charge um, so I find that really funky to be fair I will give um, Games Workshop plenty of thumbs up for that um, the other cool thing I mean you don't need to find a special rule to click into your glossary you can use your glossary by just going up here click click onto the um, click onto the page once to get the um, chapter heading up and then hit this button just here and try and do it with my thumb glossary and that will call up the overall glossary and then say we're in the middle of a game and I've got a giant and I go oh I've rolled thump with club what does thump with club do I can go into the glossary and hit thump with club and up pops thump with club click on that and I get the rule now that that is really cool um, three letters and I found the exact rule that I'm after the amount of times that you play a game and you go crap what does that rule mean if they actually release a main BRB book I don't know whether they will but I'd love to see them do it if they do release a big rule book and you can call on any special rule just by typing very quickly into the glossary that will be amazing and of course we can see that this uh, rule is linked to giants so we can go straight across to the giant entry and take a look at that and of course we've got you know more of these funky images to look at as well I do really like the fact that you can zoom in on these images and in terms of painting it's really cool but I'll show you some of that um, it's turning into a fairly long review but you know what there's a lot to talk about it's a lot of money that I dropped on this app uh, and I'm really trying to highlight everything that can be potentially really good about it so then on top of that, so we've gone, uh, co covered the glossary, we've gone through like different sections of the army book. Um, the, the actual main content is pretty much the same as the hardback book. So we've been through the bestiary, you've seen that there's an army list, um, there's also a summary page. And you can see that there are two little icons just here when the camera properly zooms in. So these little icons here let you switch between the beastier entry, the army list entry and the summary entry. So right now we're on the beastiery page for the giant but if I wanted to see well how much is a giant I'm on the beastery page I'm trying to build an army list here guys if I click on the uh, A it will flick me over to the army list entry so you can see these icons pop up wherever you have unit entries and clicking on that A has taken me over to army list so that's pretty cool but maybe I want to see the summary page for giant I can just go click on the S and try and get the camera where I'm actually clicking it is kind of there we go so there's the summary page now those buttons aren't as responsive as I would like to be perfectly honest with you um, I think the app is a little slow so I'm gonna give a little bit of a negative there I've seen other people reviewing these apps and they've said oh they're not slow they're, they're, but they are they're a little bit slow considering as you're paying a fortune for this app it's like a 25 pound app which you know is crazy it should be really responsive but it's it's responsive enough I just feel that it should be a lot slicker for the price and I feel like you know you have the right to be a discerning customer you spend a lot of money on an iPad and most other applications run you know swiftly other books run swiftly so this one kind of should as well so I kind of feel like either GW's dropped the ball somewhere or maybe uh, how iBooks works has dropped the ball somewhere with the app I think because other iBooks work fine it's probably what you know the way that GW have created it while I'm on that vein of negatives to do with how the application is uh, it's also a friggin huge app uh, each book is about 500 600 megabytes which is pretty enormous to be honest I mean I have a 16 uh, gig um, iPad here and 
it would not take long if you were the kind of person who wanted to, you know, have every single army book, you know, you're made of money and you can afford that, then it wouldn't take long to fill the um fill the device up unless you've got the bigger iPad of course. Um I know that's not such a huge problem. I mean, it's 500 meg, but I feel like it could be optimized a little better and uh, sorry about the quick uh, misty shot of my face there as things start to uh, tone off. So, that's pretty much it really for that segment of the book. There's a couple of other things I would like to go through though. Um, a couple of other useful bits and bobs, useful features. Um, one is you can of course take notes within this as well. So if you actually click and highlight that will put a highlight into the uh, book. So if there's a particular rule you need to highlight for whatever reason uh, you can do that. Uh, if you then tap on that highlight, you can add a note, so you could put, uh, try and type while looking at phone and screen, uh, put snotlings are cool, yo. So yeah, there you go, snotlings are cool, uh, and once you've saved that, you do have that little note symbol there, if get the camera to just focus yep yeah. so you've got your highlight and your note next to it so you can go oh what was, what's that about click on the note and there you go snotlins are cool uh you can add obviously these these stay within the book you can obviously then just delete that out should you not want it anymore so that's kind of useful i can see the main use for that would be in some kind of um some kind of environment where say <laughs> you're playing a game and maybe you come across a rule you're not really sure how you should interpret it uh, but you don't want to bog the game down by you know arguing over it or flicking through books or whatever so you just go okay well we'll highlight um, we'll highlight this rule for now put a little note against it to check later and then once the game's finished you've got a note within your book to be able to flick through and go back to it or I guess if you're making an arm list if you're the kind of person who likes to put post-it notes everywhere that kind of thing would be useful something like that really so it's not like a brilliant feature um, but I suppose it's a nice to have and you can access uh, from the notes button up here you can access all the notes that you have against all the different chapters so it's it's a nice little feature to have but it's not really the um the be all and end all so the last thing i'm going to do is just pinch out of this and go to the look at the painting side of things so let's take a look at monsters that's probably going to be the quickest one to show so i'm just going to go into trolls so obviously i'm now talking from a painting perspective so you can look at the quality of these images here and i will try to um keep the uh, camera as focused as possible and again I apologize for the fact that I'm doing this on an iPhone it must be shaky as hell uh, I must look like somebody with Parkinson's or something and I'm not saying that to be horrible in any way uh, but you can obviously like then zoom in on these pictures if you do the whole click thing so you can really get whoops you can really get up close with these things and really see the detail on the models so I mean it would work obviously a lot better if I was trying to uh, do this with two hands rather than shakily hold an iPhone and flick through at the same time but th here's the other thing and this is where I think it really does shine now originally when these 360 degree image things came up I was kind of like meh they're a bit useless what's the point of them um, they're probably why the application is so huge it's a bit of bloatware etc 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 but if you do just click into these 360 things, they do take a little while to load. Um, ordinarily, this one's loaded quite quick. So I have been slagging off the response timers. And actually, in fairness, you know what? You've got video evidence of it not being too terrible. But then you've got an actual 360 degree that you can do to look around this model. Now, it's pretty easy to dismiss this, particularly when it's on, say, GW's website. And you're just, you know, you just dismiss it as a... a marketing thing of yeah look we've got a 360 model but then when it's actually in your army book and you've got quite a few different examples of this it's great because you always get a picture like that look there's the model guys but you never really get to see how they've painted say the back of it and again you can still do this whole zoom in really really fine detail and you can actually see the apple symbol um 
reflecting off the back of the iPhone um, but you can see really fine detail go really deep into it which I think is really cool uh, and it just makes that a really nice feature to have and I think from a painting perspective this is going to be amazing um, I think they should use more of them in the the actual Citadel painting guides but it's really nice to have it in the book I mean just look at that mangler squig and just being able to go in and say how have they done the mangler squig and look you've got all this all these extra goblins on the back that you wouldn't get from an ordinary painting guide and even the white dwarf might give you several different pictures if I can just try and focus the camera there it might give you several different pictures but it doesn't really it doesn't really give you quite the same as being able to do this where you just being able to really look in depth so obviously I'm just sort of like tooting their horn now I mean obviously you've got the Arachnarok which was just built for this 3D thing um, but it just I think that is really 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 good it's really nice for you to be able to do that when you're about to paint a model and as a matter of fact I mean we're taking a look at the Arachnarok now and I will move my camera around really messily but you can see I'm actually starting to paint an Arachnarok now and I think having to see how they've highlighted their models and to see how they've done things is going to work wonders when I actually come around to actually finishing this monster here so I think that's kinda cool um, I think that's pretty much all there is to say on the book itself I've pretty much been through everything I mean you can see just the amount of things within here and somebody's calling me in the background so I apologize guys um, so you can see just the amount of um, amount of pictures that you've got available within here as well I mean obviously I started on the monster section so there's lots lots more than that if we just pinch out of that and go back you've obviously got the entire range and you can start off on you know you see you've got 360 degree of Azhag and or iron claw and you've just they've, they've packed it full of and this is where it's starting to be a bit laggy see how this white screen when it's trying to like catch up so that's where I'm talking about the responsiveness um, that and perhaps the other bit that I don't like about the responsiveness is when you're clicking those army buttons sometimes they don't work when you move in between bestiary and army and summary and that's not always great but you know what it feels like a bit of a nitpick so that's pretty much the book now so I think I've given you enough actual video footage to sort of drool over I hope that's what you're doing I mean I think it's pretty good I mean I'm just gonna stop this video now um, hopefully the end of the shaky endeavors and just show you um, just just go through some summary slides right guys um, just going to take you through a quick summary. I know this has been a pretty long video, but you know what? I was kind of excited about this, and I also felt like there aren't really any properly in-depth reviews of this on the interwebs anyway, so I thought I'd actually attempt to give you one. So, uh, this is my quick summary of uh, both the good and the bad, and my final sort of conclusions on what we've just been looking at. So, first up, finally, Games Workshop embrace the digital age. I think this is, you know, a positive we all have to take from this. Whether or not you like um, the book, whether or not that you find there's lots of negatives with it, it's about damn time that uh, Games Workshop just embrace moving with the times. Um, so it's just nice to see that. That's a pretty big positive. Uh, the glossary for the special rules is amazing. So rather than just a catch-all of, oh, it's great that they're in the digital age, it's also important to just say, you know what, having that glossary does make this application useful. Having the ebook with a searchable glossary, uh, being able to just tap on a rule, pop it up, find out all instances of that rule within the book, it's great. Um, it's it's a functional use for the application and it makes it you know it's not just a silly novelty when you've bit you know you've got something as useful as that uh, being able to flick between different sections quickly is great for gameplay and you know what it will be I've not actually used this book yet um, within uh, a game I have used various you know PDF copies of books in the past um, they're not terrific but you know what it saves you lugging your books with you and I can certainly see 
that this does have an advantage against that kind of approach. You know, I, sometimes, you know, I've, I take my army books with me, but you, if you've got your rule book and your army book and all your models, it becomes too much. If you can just chuck it on an iPad, great. So, I like that functionality, being able to, you know, switch between the summary page and the army lists and the bestiary, and I think that makes it pretty, pretty cool. So, up next we've got full colour pictures and 360 degree photos are great painting aids. And of course I've been through this obviously already in the, the actual video part of the review, but I think that will be really useful for painting. If this isn't for you, then maybe you won't get anything out of it, and it does kind of cause a little bit of bloat on the, the system or app size, but I think it's kind of worth it. It does add that little bit of extra. Artwork looks great in full HD, and you know what? It does. It is a real joy to look at. The The artwork is great in um, GW, GW books anyway. The new hardback books are fantastic. I really, really love them. I've got the Tomb King one, the Orcs one, uh, I've got the Ogre one, and as soon as they do High Elf one, I'll have that because I'm starting High Elf Army. So, you know, I love getting the hardback books. Uh, because you know they're a great experience and these aren't bad either because you've got full HD on these images you can zoom in on them take pictures of them and all of that and that's kind of a nice thing to have periodic updates are a good thing and I think this is another sell point I didn't exactly mention it uh, within or in fact I didn't mention it at all within the video footage but these books are going to be updated as per the FAQs, which is a nice thing to have, not having to print out reams and reams of FAQs, you know, and stick them within your book, and it obviously wouldn't work with it being on the iPad, you can just take paper with you as well, or you could, but it's, you know, kind of defeats the point of this kind of thing. So that's the good, let's move on to the bad, and maybe ignore my terrible humour at the top of the page there. Um, first up, it's expensive, and apparently I missed a comma off it's, but in any case, I need to be able to, you know, put this into context uh, without going on to a massive rant about Games Workshop. It's expensive. 25 quid for an application on your phone is expensive. 25 quid for a book in general of this size is expensive. You pay it when it's the hardback, because you know what, we've been paying these costs for army books for years. I think the issue here is a lot of us already have the hardback book. Now, if you don't have a hardback book, this is great. It's not going to cost you, well, it'll save you £1.50, but it's going to cost you the same as if you wanted to invest into the book. So, I can perfectly see why somebody might decide that they don't want the book at all. I mean, I've got plenty of hardback books on my shelf um, from, you know, previous editions of, um, you know, the various armies and rule books and all of that and they take up a lot of space so it's kind of cool to be able to just have a book that's on your iPad not taking up any space a um, great advantage of the digital age but if you already have that hardback book and I'm kind of half convinced that I still want that hardback book because you know I, I get the new book smell which is a big thing for nerds such as myself and it's kind of nice to be able to view it as a book but I suppose the issue, to, before I get you know off track, is it's kind of expensive to have to buy both. In terms of my orcs and goblins, it's cost me 50 quid, or just over 50 quid, in order to have a hardback book and an e-book. And I feel like maybe the model is wrong there. I think maybe this is something that they should be bundling with a hardback version. Maybe they'll do that in the future. It would be nice to see them do it. Um, I think people who buy the hardback book should be able to pay extra to get this. So, if you did the hardback book at like, you know, what it is now, 2750, I think it is, and if you bundle this for an extra tenner, I'd pay it. I think uh, you know, plenty of people would pay that. You know, if they don't, then they don't. But I think to have it basically the same price as the book is a little expensive. But since they are selling it separately, I can understand why they're doing that because if they did price it at £10 on its own, then no one would buy their hardback books. So, yeah, and it's kind of difficult to um, only sell it through um, through an iPad, really. But, yeah, I don't want to get too much into that. It is expensive, uh, and you've just got to decide whether or not the advantages outweigh the disadvantages. On the subject of disadvantages, it doesn't really offer more than the hardback in terms of content. I love the glossary search, I love all the artwork, I love being able to zoom in on it, I love being able, you know, all the features that I've gone through, great. But it doesn't really offer me that 
much more than I've already got. The hardback book and the digital copy contain the same thing. So you're paying about the same price again to get the same. You just in this respect you're only paying for the features. And are the features worth twenty five quid? Mm, not really sure. It's down to you as an individual. It's iPad only. That's a big disadvantage. Uh, and of course I did manage to remember the comma this time. Um or apostrophe even. Um yeah, throw myself off there. Uh, yeah, it's iPad only, which kind of restricts it for, you know, iPad users. There's plenty of Android tablets out there and other tablets out there, and it would be kind of nice to see them expand it, you know, a more open range to catch more people, because, you know, it's not only iPads that are on the scene. Um, but that's kind of a niggle. They have to start somewhere. Um, and, yeah, well, there's not too much to say about that really. I've got an iPad so it doesn't affect me too much but I can understand why some people would be upset. Sometimes it doesn't feel responsive and that's kind of an issue. I mean it's again it's a bit of a nitpick, a bit of a niggle. Um, sometimes it doesn't feel responsive, sometimes it does. I mean you saw in the video it flashed up with the loading screen a couple of times, it went did that white screen clicking on the uh, summary and army page sometimes doesn't work but you know what it's not that big of a deal. I just feel like because you're paying 25 quid for this application, I feel it should be a little bit more polished. I shouldn't be having to justify why sometimes it's not responsive. So, yeah. Uh, the way updates are handled could be better. So I mentioned on the previous, uh, on the good points, that, hey, it's going to be updated. But I don't think anybody's really looked at how the updates are going to work yet. Effectively, to update this, you're going to have to delete your copy of the book off your iPad and then reinstall it. Now this thing took a friggin age to install. I mean it's 500 meg. Do that over Wi-Fi. I'm sure you could plug it into your PC and do it faster but you know I, I want to be able to download it from my Wi-Fi. Why not? Um, and yeah it took quite a while to install and it's just a bit of a faff to have to delete it. I would like to see them. I don't know whether this is a limitation of iBooks or whether or not it's a limitation that you know Games Workshop's application has. Um, but I would like to see some kind of option to go, you know, ping up a little box to say, "Hey, your book's updated," and you just hit a button, just like you have with the App Store, where you know something gets updated, it pops up with a little notification, you click update, and it just updates. It does its thing. It'd kind of be nice to see that. Uh, also on the updates front, I have looked at the Orc and Goblin FAQ and I have looked in the um, obviously the book here, the ebook, and on the Big Wah there is the uh, I think it's Gaze of Mork, uh, that spell and the FAQ tells you to ignore the first sentence of um, the paragraph, the second paragraph which is um, direct damage spell uh, it's basically saying that the spell is a direct damage spell and that is still included within the ebook. Now I think this could be because the FAQ doesn't say remove this sentence, it says ignore this sentence, so I guess you could get away with it. But I also kind of think that if the FAQ says ignore it, maybe they should have just took it out because it's now irrelevant and you know what, if you don't go check the FAQ you are still reading the wrong thing. So I guess that one just sli slipped past the quality net and maybe I just need to drop an email or something to GW and point it out but yeah there's that and that's pretty much it for my breakdown of it overall I like it I think most of my issues are nitpicking there's a great amount of advantages for using this it's pretty damn good um, whether or not it's worth 25 quid uh, I'm not sure which leads me on to I'd have to use the army a lot to justify it for future books. Like I said, I've got a, the hardback copy of the Tomb Kings, I've got the hardback copy of the uh, Ogre Kingdoms book, those are my two other fantasy armies, uh, and I'm also starting High Elves, which at some point I will get. I've not bought the book yet because I'm not playing it until I, they get the new the new rules for 8th edition. I don't see the point of buying the book if they're going to release a new one soon. Um, and uh, yeah, it's kind of expensive to buy it for every army when you've already bought the books. Um, I'd love to see them change their marketing slightly, but I can also see that I'd like it. If you were to ask me, would you like it for each book? Yeah, I would, and maybe I'd pay the cost. I just think I'll have to be 
playing the armies a lot to really get the most out of it. But that's pretty much my review of it anyway. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Sorry if I waffled a bit too much and I apologise for the shaky camera. But I really wanted to try and bring as much as a detailed review as I could to this. Uh, so I hope you guys have enjoyed that and I'll see you next time.